Hey, and welcome to Journey Church Eva. Our mission here at Journey is to help you discover your real life purpose in Christ so you can make a difference in your world. We would love to hear from you. Check out the show notes for a link to send us an email and a link if you want to give. There's also a link for prayer requests. We have a prayer team that will touch God on your behalf. So send us those prayer requests and let's all watch God move in your life together. You will also find the like, comment, and the subscribe buttons below. Go ahead, hit all three of them. But most importantly, we want you to hit the share button and let's send this message to those of your friends and family that may need some encouragement today. Now, here's today's message. We hope it blesses you, challenges you, and helps you grow stronger in your walk with Jesus. Let's pray for today's message. Father, we thank you, God, and we ask that you just invade this word into our hearts, into our minds. Say this when we say, I am open to the word of God today to do what only it can do to my life. I am here to receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Amen. Part two today, get ready. Turn to your neighbor and say, you need to be getting ready. Now, last week, if you wasn't here, again, you can catch it up by watching it or listening to it on the pod or the video cast. Last week, we talked about getting ready. Everybody say, get ready. We talked about how you can't get ready with something if you don't already obtain that thing. So if I, want, I got up this morning to get ready, put some clothes on, but how many know that you had to have clothes to put on before you could get ready to come to church? And we are thankful that you had clothes and you put them on before you come. Say praise the Lord for that. Amen. Now, this week I want to concentrate on be ready. There is a difference between get ready and being ready. Amen. Are y'all okay? Let me give you the quick definition of be ready. Being ready means this right here, knowing how to use what you have. Knowing how to use what you have. It's not just about, can I put it on? Do I know how to use what I have? Amen? And last week, we give the example of, of law enforcement officers or our military getting all of the gear and putting it on and being ready to go out and face a day in case their life's in danger to defend their life, to defend someone else's life. And and this week here, how many know they can put a gun on, but if they've never fired it, don't know how to use it, don't know how to load it, don't know how to chamber one, that gun really don't do them a whole lot of good. Amen? Matter of fact, if you've got a gun and you've been one of those that's bought one in the, this past year because gun sales are out the roof, please do us all a favor and get with somebody that can show you how to do it properly. The world's worst thing would be to buy a gun and somebody shoot you with your own gun. That's a bad day, y'all. Okay, so if you've got a gun, learn the proper gun safety, learn how to use it to defend yourself. And again, there, there's, there are four major laws of gun safety, and I'm not going here to go over gun safety today. But however, just an example of, of having a weapon or having anything. You got your keys, but if you don't know how to drive a car, it doesn't do you any good. You got keys to your house, but if you don't know how to put the key in and unlock your door, you'll stay locked out your whole life. So, so you've got to have stuff to get ready. Then once you get ready, you've got to be ready. And be ready means I know how to use what i got. Now, a lot of people, we have knowledge of God. We've learned about God. We've learned about God. We've put God's Word on. But do you know how to use what you got? Did I just fall out or something? Okay. Not yet, huh? Having something and knowing how to use something is two totally different worlds. Amen. And I'll be honest with you, I have bought some stuff and I've got some stuff. I don't even know how to use it. I do. I caught it on sale, I bought it, and I've stuck it at the house. And I don't know how to use what I've bought, some of the stuff, but one of these days I'll get around to it. Amen? Hallelujah. But this morning I want to talk mainly about two, two quick things this morning. Well, maybe not so quick, but anyway, you're here. I'm here. Let's go. How many of you <laughs> has been saved by the grace of God and you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Come on, can you just put your hand up as a witness? I am a child of God this morning. Hallelujah. That's a good thing. Amen. Now, let me ask you something right here real quickly. Do you know how to use your salvation? Uh, 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 well, I'm saved. Yeah. Okay. What good does that do you? Uh, uh, I'm not going to hell. Hey, congratulations. <laughs> We're proud. I mean, I'm glad of that. But what are you going to do with it between now and when you go to heaven? Uh, uh, I'm just going to not go to hell. Uh, okay, that's good, but there might be a little more to your salvation than just keeping you out of hell. 
and we need to know how to use what we've got. So if you've got salvation, it has a purpose more than just keeping you from hell when you pass from this life into the next life, okay? And, and I hope you realize that. I realize a lot of people, that's all they want Jesus for, just don't send me to hell, let me, let me live like hell, but I don't want to go to hell. So I want just enough Jesus to keep me out of hell and not, nothing else, okay? Good luck with that, but I, I, my Bible says if you get him, there's a desire from the Holy Spirit that's in you to want to live for him. So let me ask you again, do you know how to use your salvation? All right, let's take a quick trip down a few scriptures. Mark chapter 16, verse 16. Now this is written in red, so these are the words of Christ himself. He says, he who believes and is baptized, everybody say baptized, will be saved. It says they will be saved. That's the requirement. You get saved, and once you get saved, you come into your baptism. As an outward sign of what you've done, you will be saved. But watch this now. But he who does not believe will be what? Condemned. Now, let's look at this right quick. Now, the he's there are are talking about us as individuals. Everybody say me. The he is you. The he is me. So I can read it like this. If I believe and I'm baptized, I'll be saved. But if I don't believe, I will be condemned. It's not God condemning me. It is me condemning myself. Okay? Because God had made a way for me never to be in condemnation and not be condemned to hell. And that way is through the blood of Jesus Christ. But he gives me the ultimate choice. I can receive it and walk in it, or I can deny it and get the results that that brings, which is not eternal life with Christ. It is eternal damnation in hell. Now, let me just tell you this right here today. Right here today, good news, those watching via the the internet, those sitting here with us live, today you are only in one or two places. You are either walking with the condemned or you're walking with those who are not condemned. Hallelujah. And you know the reason you're in one of those two categories is by your own choice. So if you're walking in the condemned and you don't know where you'd spend eternity and you'd go to hell, it is, my friend, is absolutely 100% your choice. If you have, or know when you die that you're going to see the face of Jesus and the loved ones gone before and spend eternity in heaven, it was because of your choice. But it was because Jesus made a way for there to be a choice. Amen? Amen? And I'm so thankful that, that I hope you've made that choice today. But I'm walking with the non-condemned because I read the Bible, I heard the preaching, I listened to the Word, and I believed by faith that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. I accepted Him as my Lord and Savior. I ain't lived it perfectly, but I've lived with a perfect Savior, amen? And I'm going to heaven when I die. I am not condemned. And not only am I not condemned over there, I'm not going to walk in condemnation here. And that's really what I want to get to today about it. It's not, yeah, heaven and hell, you've already made that, your mind up about that. But how many know every day we got to get up and we can choose whether or not we walk in condemnation while we're on the earth? Yeah. Amen? And one of the scriptures we're not even going to put up there today, the Bible says there's therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Now that doesn't mean we don't feel conviction from the Holy Spirit to say, hey, don't do this, but I'm not condemned when I make a mistake. Yeah. Amen? I've not got the con- condemnation, the shame, the guilt that can follow me. Why? Because I can get forgiveness and I can repent and I can learn to overcome that by the grace of God and move on and enjoy my life. And as Christians, so many times I think we're not living in the fullness of our salvation if all we think about is just going to heaven when we die. we got to live till we die. How many of you want to live till you die? Amen? I know a lot of people, they're not living till they die. They're just trying to exist till they die. Bless God, I want to live till I die. And then when I die, like I said, I want to die used completely up, not worth nothing. Nothing left in my tank, gone, zero. He should have been gone about two years ago, but he just muddled around. Amen? But he still was breathing Jesus. Look at John, most famous book of the Bible, John chapter 3, 16. But I want to read a couple more verses, but I do want to set this up for you. Remember, we're talking about walking in condemnation as a Christian. You know this verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish You won't die, you will have what? Everlasting life. But now look at this next verse. For God did not send his son into the world to... Oh, so God didn't send Jesus to condemn you? No, absolutely not. He did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him, Jesus, the world can be saved from condemnation. Amen? That's one of the roles of Jesus. Now look at this next verse. 
He, talking about me and you, he who believes in him, Jesus, is not condemned. Woo! I'm not condemned. Are you? Hallelujah. You already shouted right there, but it's too late. We're going to move on. <laughs> Get it next time. Get it quick. But he who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already. The failure to have faith is condemnation. The failure to accept Jesus Christ doesn't mean you're in the plain level and where you get to choose one day. You've made a choice by not choosing every day. There is no middle ground. There is no wait and see. Today, you're in one of two places. You're walking with the condemned or you're walking with the uncondemned and the set free. Hallelujah. But, it, but those who do not believe is condemned already because he, me, you, we have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So look at your neighbor and say, it's all on you. See, Jesus has already done his part. Have you used your salvation to get free from condemnation? Or have you used your salvation just to try to go to heaven and you feel condemned as a Christian? You feel so unworthy of God's love. You feel like you ain't even worthy to stay saved, be saved, or get saved anymore. My friend, let me tell you something. God said, I didn't come to put that on you. We just read that. He said, I didn't come to bring condemnation to you. I come to get you out of condemnation. And again, the verse we're not going to put up here today, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. Now, is that permission to sin? Absolutely not. But it's permission that when you do mess up, and you must have fail or fall down, that you get back up with God's hand, you put it under the blood of Jesus, and you press on into the glory of God. Hallelujah. You don't sit there and waller in your past mistakes unless you want to walk with the condemned. Amen? <laughs> it's, it's really simple. As a matter of fact, in the book of John chapter 8, now that's not your notes either, but in, in John chapter 8, around verse 30 to 32, somewhere in there, it says, Therefore, whoever the Son sets free is free indeed. That free indeed means I'm free from now on. I got born again, gloriously saved when I was 16 years old. And I was set free then, but I still walked in a lot of imprisonment. Because I didn't know fully about the, I knew God loved, I knew enough to get saved. Come on, I was 16 years old, didn't want to go to hell, knew some of the things I was doing would send me to hell. Come on, any 16 year olds out there? Anybody ever been 16? Okay, just checking, you know what I'm talking about. Some things that you know you were doing that wasn't right. If you died, you was going to hell. Yeah, somebody say, yay for that. Mm-hmm. So I went down to the altar, gave my life to Christ, and Christ set me free then, but I didn't know I was completely free. I just felt good that if I died, I might have a chance of going to heaven. I, I just increased my odds. Come on. Do you know that's how a lot of Christians face their salvation? I, I think I've increased my odds. And if I go to church, maybe I just earned another point or two on the scale of getting in one day. Let me tell you something. Salvation, either you have it or you don't. There ain't no between that. Okay? But the more I begin to study the Word of God for myself and begin to see the love and the grace, and there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ, so, well, I, I, I'm in Christ, but I still mess up. Does that not mean I'm condemned? No. It means you've got smart enough now to realize that these things are wrong by the grace of God. Again, I plead the blood of Jesus, get forgiveness, and I press on. I don't sit there and waller in that sin no more. I do something with my salvation about my sin. I walk in my salvation. I don't walk in the sin no more. Somebody say glory to God. <laughs> I love the way Psalms chapter 39, or excuse me, chapter 37, verse 39, 40 says it. And I believe this speaks really a kind of a prophetic word to our time we're living in now with all the chaos we're living in. But the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. Everybody says it's from the Lord. Do you know why it's from the Lord? Because nobody else can do it. You can't save yourself. Mom and dad can't save you. Aunt, uncle can't save you. Pastor can't save you. Nobody can save you but the Lord. Now, hopefully, you've got mom, dad, aunt, uncle, husband, wife, son, daughter, whatever, pointing you to the Lord and telling you the truth where you can get it. But he alone brings salvation to you. Amen? That's why it says the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. Watch this. He, God Almighty, is our strength, your strength, my strength, their strength in the time of trouble. How I many know we're in a time of kind of semi-trouble? Not a whole lot. But I mean, it's troubling, amen? I know some of y'all going, oh, no, you don't understand. Oh, no, you don't understand. <laughs> no, you need to read the Bible. <laughs> okay, it ain't got real bad at all. Okay, now, it's, now, I'm not trying to make light of it. It is a real thing, and I'm not denying it. It's happening. I've, I've done three COVID funerals here in the last month or a half, and so I know it's real. Okay, but he's my strength in these times. 
He's the reason we don't fall apart. He's the reason we don't go into depression. He's the reason we don't break our marriage up. He's the reason we, we, we he's our strength. And I want to add one more. My Bible said it's the joy of the Lord that's your strength. Man, you need to be having joy in the Lord during this season in time. Amen? Amen. You know, regardless of the situations around you, I find joy every time I read my Bible. Every time I pray to God, there's joy. Every time I worship, there's joy enters my heart, and it gives me strength. Say amen. amen. But look at the next verse, and it says, And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. Man, I love that. He, God Almighty, shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because. Here's the reason why this can happen. Here's the reason why it can and the reason why it's not maybe happening in you. Because they trust him. Woo! My salvation's of the Lord, but what am I doing with it? Let me ask you another question today. Do you know how to use your salvation when it comes to trusting God? Has your salvation led you to trust God, not just when it's good, but has your salvation led you to trust God even in the bad times when you, don't, when you can't find an answer in your intellect? Well, my intellect says everything is bad. My intellect and my, my circumstances surrounding me say this, 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 and this is going on. No, I still trust God regardless of my situation. Amen? Amen? And so, do you know how to use your salvation today? Now, how many of you know? <laughs> that's, everybody says that's salvation. Now, let's talk one more thing before we go today. Let me just ask you, start by asking you a question. Has, since you've been born again, you got saved, has God ever delivered you from something or someone? Raise your hand if you can testify that God's delivered you from something or someone. That's a lot of people. Most, most people, if you saved and those that don't participate, raise your hand. You should. Bless your heart. But let me ask you this. You got delivered, but do you know how to use your deliverance? Uh, well, yeah, man. I'm like, cool. I mean, I'm struggling here, and, and I prayed about it, and it's like, you know, man, I don't struggle with it no more, so <laughs> cool. I delivered. Yay for you. Now, what are you doing with it? Uh, I don't know. Okay. And again, that's really where a lot of Christians are at. So, but I want you to look at Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. This is the Bible. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty. The word liberty there also means freedom. Everybody say freedom. Therefore, stand fast in your liberty and your freedom by which Christ has made you free. See, I, anything I've ever been set free from, it was not in my strength. It was in the, Christ sets me free from everything I need to be set free from if I participate with his power. If I don't participate with him, I can stay in bondage. But anytime I participate with the power of the anointing of God, it will always lead me out of bondage, whatever it is, and it will deliver me into my freedom that Christ died for me to have. Make sure you understand you cannot free yourself. If you think you're, you, you can ever free yourself, let me ask you the question I love to ask people. How's that working out for you? You may have a season of appearance of success, but you will not walk in total freedom without the power of God in your life. That's why you see so many people roller coaster with addictions and problems and relationships and, and, and whatever it is you deal with or struggle with, it's just a constant roller coaster. You know when the roller coaster will quit? When you hook up to the train of God. That's when the roller coaster will quit. You will sail above all. Amen. Amen. So, now, here's the thing about it. Galatians 5, stand fast, therefore, in the freedoms by which Christ has made you free. Now, watch this command. And do not, everybody say, do not. And do not be entangled again with that yoke of bondage. Man, when can we learn this lesson as a person, as a family, as a marriage, as a church? If I am struggling with this podium right here, this, this table, and it's causing me problems, it's in my way all the time, if I can just learn from God's grace to go around that thing, it will never be a problem again. I'll pass by it, I won't trip over it, I won't run into it. But if I don't watch myself, I can, I can, I can absolutely not pay attention and walk right into that thing and bust a rib up or whatever, okay? Once I get set free and God's given me the knowledge, I need to stay with the knowledge of God and not go back and be entangled in bondage again. Anybody ever know anybody dealing with an addiction? And it's not, it don't have to be drugs, alcohol, pornography. It can be eating. It can be uh, screen time. And they, okay, we're going to fast these 21 days. And you do good for these 21 days and you don't drink, you don't get a bump, you don't get a hitch, you don't get a snort, you don't get a boo, you, you don't get a... 
and you do it for 21 days, but then after that, you go right back to it. If you knew it was bondage and you fasted for 21 days to get rid of it, why would, after on a 20 day 22, would you want to go back to it? Now, I plan on going back to eating some things after 21 days. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're halfway there, by the way. Y'all know that, don't you? Oh, I'll play the Bon Jovi song halfway there. But anyway, living on a prayer, halfway there. Amen. But if I'm, I'm talking about dealing with something that's detrimental to you or your relationships, why would I want to continue and go back and be entangled again with something I know that drugged me down, that drugged my loved ones down, that drugged anything down that I'm a part of? Why? Because we have a tendency to go back to things for some re- odd reason, a, f- a familiar spirit. I don't know. It's, it's, it turned to your neighbor and say, it's really weird. And, and how many of you ever walked down a, a, a major city's streets or something and you get the proverbial, hey, man, you got, a, you got some money for me? Anybody ever have that? Okay, I'm going to give you a couple of tricks to get out of that. Okay? And I'm not lying because I'm usually, the only time I ever travel in big cities is either I'm on vacation or, or, or I'm on a business trip. I used to when I worked in, in the secular world, I'd take business trips to Chicago and out to California and Portland and things. And, hey, man, I need some money to eat. Dude, listen, I'm on a business trip. I ain't got nothing but credit card. And I'm just waiting for the day. Okay, hey, I got a slide right here. <laughs> just slide it down. Okay, but for right now, most of them ain't taking the little squares and, you know, and having that. But give it a little time. I'm sure some of them's going to get inventive with it. Now, again, how would you feel if you was to reach out to help someone? Now, that doesn't mean I don't, I don't help them. If I've got the time and, and, and the Lord lays it on my heart, I'll say, okay, let me tell you what I'll do. You're hungry, right? Yeah, I'm hungry. I'll come, come with me and we'll go eat. I'm, I'm not giving them money because I've been suckered before. Now, how do you feel when you maybe you gave them a hundred or maybe, hey, I need to feed my family. Okay, here's a hundred dollars. Go to the grocery store and you watch them literally take the hundred or the 20 or whatever you give them and go into the liquor store right there in front of you. And they buy their liquor and their lottery ticket or whatever. And they come back out and you're like, wait a minute. Are you kidding me? You told me you was hungry. Why are you doing this? Because it's their culture. It's their nature. And how does that make you feel as the giver of that? Does it make you want to continue to give to them? Oh, heck no. You want to go over and snatch a knot in their tail, don't you? Snatch a knot in your tail is a southern term. Okay, everybody relax. I'm from the south. Okay. I mean, it really does. It kind of almost makes you just want to either go take it or just... How do you think God feels? When he continually gives us more than enough of everything we ever ask for. And then we take and use it inappropriately or we go back to the sin. My friend, listen to me now. We've got to quit mocking God. We've got to quit mocking God. We've got to quit abusing him and betraying what he does for us. And we've got to be faithful with what he does for us. When he delivers you, it's not for you to go back to it. Amen? He delivers you to get you out of that where you don't ever have to go back to it. And it's in the strength of his name and in the power of his word and his mercy. Amen? Now, how many can handle a little strong word today? Got your big boy britches on? Because I'm going to read you something now. It's in the Bible. It's New Testament. It's in the Bible. And it's found in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 20 and 22. And I want to read this to you now. I never, when it gets down to the last, it's going to kind of get a little rough if you're... Okay, let's just go. And when people escape from the wickedness of the world by the knowing of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that's talking about your deliverance, amen, by knowing the Lord Jesus Christ... And they get tangled up and enslaved by sin again. They are worse off than before. Now, this is Bible. The Bible says when you start pulling this stunt with Jesus, you're actually worse off. The next verse says it would be better if they had never known the way to righteousness than to know it and then reject the command. Come on, say it with me. Command. It is a command of the Lord that they were given to a life. This proves in the next verse, this proves the old proverb saying, a dog returns to its vomit, and another says a washed pig will return to the mud. How many of us in here have been the dog going back to their vomit or the pig going back to the mud? I think if we get honest, we can all say we've probably had a time or two at least of that. I'm going to raise my hand and say I've double portioned that a time or two in my life. Get delivered from something. Feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit out of love, not condemnation, but the conviction of God. And by the way, the conviction of God is a good thing. Conviction of God and the Holy Spirit lets me know God loves me. 
lets me know that God doesn't want this path for me. That's why you feel that guilt and shame sometimes. Amen? You know you ought not be doing it. That's the Holy Spirit saying, I love you. I love you too much to let you do this. I love you too much to let you do it and not be pulling at your heartstrings. Now, you can harden your heart. You can turn yourself over to a reprobate mind and go right into it and enjoy it. But you will not have the blessing of God on your life. You'll be walking with the condemned. Are you listening to me this morning, church? Amen? <laughs> Command that we are given to live a holy life. Back up in, the, in verse 22 or verse 21. You see, he's commanded us to live a holy life. He's not commanded us to get saved, get delivered, and then live like we want to. Until we need or feel like we need to get saved again and delivered again and saved again and delivered again and saved again and delivered again. You know how many times you need to get saved? Once. You know how many times you need to get delivered from something? Once. Now, you can get delivered several times if you fall several times. Bless your heart. I'm just trying to save you some pain today. Go ahead and receive it now. Walk in it. Get the power of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Get up. Rise above it. Speak the name of Jesus over your life and thread on, brother. Amen? But you only need to get saved one time. Because if, if you get what's between these pages right here, you'll get delivered when you need delivered, and it'll stick. It won't wash off. It won't fall off. And when you're tempted, yeah, you're going to be tempted, absolutely. Everybody's tempted to sin. But you don't have to fall into the temptations, the Bible says. Amen? The Bible says we're drawn to sin by our own lust and desires. So it's on us again. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't because the devil's all-powerful. The devil has zero power in your life. The only thing he can do is lay it in front of you. He can just lay it in front of you. He can lay it in front of you. Susan came over and played the role of the devil yesterday at my house. Oh, yeah. Trinity's birthday's this week. I have a red velvet cake sitting in my house covered in icing. She ta da da baba. I'm fasting from sweets. The devil walked right. No, Susan ain't the devil. Just what she brought in is devil's. It's a devil's food cake. You should have brought it. didn't matter if it had been devil's food or angel food. It's still devil food to me, okay? And I had to walk by that thing four or five times yesterday. Oh, I was tempted. I was fixing to justify breaking my fast. Lord, you provided. How can I not therefore partake? The Bible says, take, eat, bear, for you shall be filled. Lord, I got scripture. Amen. Dude, I can self-justify, but that don't mean it's God. And I ain't saying I ain't going to lose it today. I'm just saying I'm praying. <laughs> Me and God still talking about this thing, all right? So I'll, uh, anyway, I, now I'm not going to tell you, so don't ask me. I, I don't want to have to lie to you. Anyway, okay. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. But do you know how to use your deliverance? Do you know how to use it to continue to beat the devil down in your life? Do you know how to not turn back to your own vomit or to the mud that the pigs waller in? And I want to I wanna go over one more scripture with you, and we're going to kind of read it kind of fast. It's a lot of scripture here to read, but I want you to think about it. And some of you know this, this story very well. It's a very popular story found in the book of Mark chapter, uh, or excuse me, John chapter 8, 5 through 11 is what we're going to read today. But you read out the whole, the whole fifth chapter of John, it's about this. It's about a woman. See, Jesus was walking in a time when he was getting ready to establish a new covenant from the old covenant. Under the old covenant, you were under the law, and you were condemned by that law if you didn't perform the law to perfection, okay? And I don't have time to go deep into this, but the law was really given to God. The, the reason God put law on mankind on earth was to prove that we couldn't do it, that we needed a Savior, that we couldn't save ourselves. So the law really is nothing to do more than just, just expose that you can't do it. That you need help. And your help is in the Lord. Amen. My help comes from the Lord. Amen. And so the religious leaders of the time, being an Old Testament, Old Covenant body, they were trying to put Jesus under the law, but Jesus was coming to fulfill the law and establish a new covenant. Amen. All right. And so in this time, they were doing anything and everything they could when he was trying to teach, there's going to be a grace. There's going to be forgiveness of sin that, 
man's going to pay, the, the son of God's going to pay, and you ain't going to have to go back into the temple and get the priest's blessing and all this right here. Now, the priestly blessing's still good, but you're going to have access to God straight through Jesus Christ yourself, which was heresy to them. That's why they killed him, okay? But here they thought one day they're trying to trick him and find another reason they can kill him. So he comes in there with them, and he's around them, and, and they bring a woman, the Bible says, caught in the act of adultery. Not just hearsay, they actually caught her in the act, okay? And so they're bringing them before Jesus, throwing her down, and they're declaring, hey, Moses' law says we got to kill her. What say you? See, they're trying to trick Jesus, okay? Now let's pick up that story in John chapter 8, verse 5 through 11. Now Moses in the law, this is what they, they, these are the Pharisees and the religious people speaking to Jesus. Moses in the law commanded us, the religious people, that such persons should be stoned. But what do you say? Talking to Jesus. Next verse says, this they said, testing him, Jesus, that they might have something of which to accuse him, talking about Jesus. I love this right here. But Jesus stooped down and wrote in the ground with his finger, as though he didn't even hear him. Now, we've all heard stories about what, but can I, can I challenge you here? How many know that Jesus just didn't write in the ground one time, he wrote twice? See, most people just hear, oh, Jesus wrote in the ground. No, he actually wrote twice in the ground. This is the first time he wrote in the ground, as though he did not hear him. So then, next verse says, in verse 7 it says, So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, this is what Jesus said, He who is without sin among you, let him throw the first stone at her. He just like, mm. Now, let me make sure you understand this. I cannot prove this biblically. I cannot prove this from anything. This is just my imagination working. Okay? Everybody say it's, it's my imagination. It's my imagination. But I can see, now again, I cannot biblically fact this. I want to make sure you understand. I'm not preaching something here that the Bible says, doesn't say, never does say. We'll know when we get there, okay? But I can see, my, this is what I would have been doing. I would have been writing their name. Theophilus, Yokozuna, Shambalamba, Okazuno. You know, they had some weird names back in them days. Okay, I'd have been writing every one of those people that had a rock in their hand. I'd have been writing their name down. And then he says, what he says, he finally looks up and says, those without sin let you, you go ahead and throw the first stone at her. Now look at the next verse. Very interesting. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. So now they're thinking, he's giving them time to think I don't really have sin in my life that nobody knows about anyway. So they're still, they're, what, they're self-justifying, like me fixing to eat a piece of cake probably. But anyway, no, no. They're self-justifying. They're going over, probably quoting some of their Old Testament scriptures. Well, we've caught her in the act, though. We've got witnesses. We've got the eyewitnesses. We've, I don't know what happened to the man. I don't know why the man ain't being killed either. But anyway, come on, ladies. Can I have a better, hey, <laughs> snafu. Okay, guilty, guilty. It takes two to tango. Hallelujah. Come to the XO marriage conference. You'll learn about that. Okay, so pressing on. <laughs> Please put up the next verse where I can preach. <laughs> then those who heard it, being convicted by their own consciences, went out one by one, beginning with the eldest, even into the least. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing in the midst. Stop right there. So Jesus... They begin to accuse, Jesus stoops down, and, and, and again, in my imagination, what I would have done, I would have wrote their names. And then I would have said, those of you without sin, go ahead and throw the first stone. And I could look in their eyes and begin to see they were self-justifying. Then what I would have done in my second writing, I don't know that he'd done this, but I could see maybe Jesus, or this is exactly what I would have done, I would have begun to write the names of the woman they had slept with, either in adultery or fornication before marriage. Shaniqua, Priscilla, Quasantina, Shamalama, four or five under this one. And then they may look and go, oh, he knows. 
I didn't know he knew about that. <laughs> I was going to throw a stone, but he, he, he know. I think I just, I'm going to go home now. I say, I think I hear mama calling. And one by one, they left from the eldest who had the most sense to leave first to the youngest who finally wised up and, and went on. Amen? And then I, this is beautiful how it ends up. Next verse. When Jesus has raised himself up from writing whatever he wrote, and he saw no one there but the woman, and he said to her, Jesus speaking, he said, woman, where are those that accuse you? Where are your accusers? Where are these accusers of yours at? Has no one, well, say it with me. Now here we're back to it. Has no one condemned you? Now was she guilty? Absolutely. Was she condemned by the old law? Absolutely. So what's the difference? Jesus brings a grace into the condemnation. And she answered in the next verse and said, there's no one, Lord. And Jesus looked at her and he says, neither do I condemn you. And why did he say neither do I condemn you? Because God the Father had always given the job description to Jesus Christ, his son, why he's coming to earth. He said he's not coming to condemn the world. He's coming to set the world free. He couldn't condemn her in that or he'd have broke the Father's law for his life in the New Testament, in the New Covenant. Whew. That right there was another place, but y'all done missed it now. Let's just roll on. Now, let's just stop and take a praise break right there real quick. Man. Not condemned. Guilty, but not condemned. Man. It don't get no better than that, folks. Hallelujah. But he did tell her this before he left. He says, neither do I condemn you, but this is, this is where so many people miss the mark. Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. He didn't say, honey, don't worry about it. It's okay. Uh, honey, don't worry about it. You got away with it this time. Go back and continue to do it. Honey, it really ain't that bad of a sin. Don't worry about it. He said, no, listen, sister, you sinned, and now you've tasted my freedom. Now don't go do it again. Amen? And I think sometimes we take the grace and the forgiveness of God and think, I can do it again. I can go again. Woo, as soon as the guilt and the condemnation leaves after splattering your bladder from Jesus, wow, I'm free to go sin again. No, God forbid, the Bible says. He says, go and sin no more. And I think he's telling the church today, church, you're under my new covenant. You're under my grace and my mercy. You're not walking with the condemned, so don't walk with the condemned. And if you fall into it, I'm going to get you up, but don't sin again. Amen? Go and sin no more. It, it was a sin, it is a sin, and that will always be a sin against God. But it doesn't bring condemnation unless you don't receive Christ and walk in his grace. Amen? We've all said, a lot of us have said in here today, we've been saved. Hallelujah. Woo, we've been delivered from something or even someone sometimes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But my friend, in, in being ready to face what are you doing with your salvation and do you know how to use your deliverance today to, to be ready? You, you're, you got your salvation on, you got your deliverance on, but do you know how to implement it? Do you know how to use it against the enemy? Do you know how to help others out? If, if I'm a lifeguard and I've got the, the little ring that I can toss or, the, or the, the flotation device I can toss you and I see you drowning, I've got the means to help you. But you know what? I've got to deploy that and i got to throw it to you. You will drown if somebody throws you a line. Amen? Do you know how to throw the line today? Do you know how to use what you got to help someone else out? I'm glad I'm saved. Hallelujah, I'm really glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm delivered. But you know what? I ain't satisfied with my salvation or my deliverance because I want everyone to be saved, and I want every single person I meet to be saved and delivered. And watch them, watch, watch, watch them mature and manifest in the full presence and the, mag, the magnificent things that God has for their lives. And you'll never do that without getting saved and getting free from whatever bondage you walk into sometimes. Amen? Amen? Amen. Let's stand our feet today. Come on up. Hallelujah. Now, I didn't have time to go here today, but how many of you know, let me ask you this right here. Do you know how to use your healing? Anybody been healed in here? Do you know how to use your healing? If God, let's just take physical right quick. If God heals you of something, do you confess you're going to get it again next year? What if God heals you of the flu and the Rona this year? 
Next year, if it comes back around, back, back up, well, I'm probably going to get it. You know, I'm, I'm probably not immune no more. I'm probably, I'm a, man, don't let that junk come out of your mouth. Use your healing. Stand on your healing, whether you feel it or got it or not, or whether you have got it, know how to keep it. How many of you here, God's blessed you? Do you know how to use your blessing? You got a blessing, but now do you know how to use that blessing? You got ready, you got yours, but now do you know how to be a blessing? Amen? How many has been forgiven? Oh, you got forgiveness. Man, you got that in your holster. You put it on to protect your feelings and your emotions because you know you're forgiven. You don't walk in condemnation no more. You don't walk in the guilt and the shame no more. Do you know how to use that to help the next person out? To tell them you forgive them. Hey, I forgive you. Or to tell them, man, I want to encourage you to forgive that person or persons. I want to encourage you. Walk in forgiveness. Amen? <laughs> Last one. I wrote all these down. I was going to preach on all these, but I decided to stick with the two most important that will get you to these, and that's salvation and deliverance. If you don't have them, you ain't going to get healed. You can't get blessed. You can't be forgiven without salvation and deliverance. But the last one, anybody ever have power from God? The Bible says he empowers us with the Holy Spirit. You know how to use the power he's given you. But wouldn't it be a shame to know you had all the power in the world to make, make life better for yourself or those around you, bless your marriage, bless your family, bless, bless what you do. It's there, but you just didn't know how to use it. Or maybe you knew how, you just didn't want to draw it out and use it, afraid to make you look stupid. Wow. Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Final question today, do you know how to use what Jesus does for you? Because he's been... And that's a short list, even, even with the little stuff I added on it. That's still a short list of what God does for us. Amen. There's just, just the names of God, the Hebrew names of God is just a long list of what he is. Healer, Rabbi, Banner, Strong Tower, Shelter, Lily of the Valley, Bright Morning Star, Fairest of 10,000, Prince of Peace, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. My goodness, the list goes on and on. And he done all that, not for him, but he done it for you and me. Do we know what to do with what he's given us? You got ready by getting saved. Now you got to be ready with your salvation and your deliverance and all the things he does to serve others. Because what good does it do to have all of it to yourself and not share it? You were made to share. Amen? I see you just to bow your head this morning real quickly. If you're here and you've never, ever, ever had the first one in your life, you've never experienced the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ, you've never surrendered your life and said, Lord, I can't save myself. I'm walking with the condemned. I'm not a bad person. I hadn't committed no major crimes, but Lord, it's not about committing, ma listen to me now, it's not about committing a major crime or a major this. It's about have you acknowledged that you cannot save yourself and that you're walking with the condemned and the only way to walk with the uncondemned is through the blood of Jesus. And it's what we call in the church getting saved or being born again. It's literally being born again, born into the kingdom of God. And it's receiving Jesus, it's surrendering your life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and beginning a journey with Him to where you, you, you start finding out who He is, what He's about, who you are in Him, that you're not condemned and you're free in Jesus' name today to live that holy, righteous life that He has before you. And here's the thing about it. God is so gracious, He gives you a choice. And He's giving you a choice today. So if you've never made that decision, Number one, you will not be joining any church today, not even here. We don't want you to join a church. We don't ever want that to be pressure. So we're not asking you to join church. Number two, we're not asking you to get some religion. Religion can send you to hell as fast as anything I know. What we're inviting you to do, again, is lay your life down and say, Jesus, save me. Be my Lord and my Savior. I'm ready to start walking with you and learning every day of my life. And I'm ready for this today without no strings attached, God. If that's you today, just lift your hand real quick. Anybody in here? need to be what we call saved today. Anyone? Anybody? All right, I'm going to take one more direction before we go further. It's not about, about anybody to the rededication part. Does anybody here know somebody that you, need, that you wish they were saved? Raise your hand. If you, know, if you know a lost person that doesn't know Jesus and you know them and you're like, man, I, I really would like to see them come to Christ, raise your hand real quickly, everybody. Hallelujah. Okay, put them down. What are you going to do with this message? What are you going to do with the salvation you got? Can you share your salvation experience with somebody else? Absolutely, you can share that. You can't, you can't get them saved on your own because it's up to the Lord. But you can share your salvation 
You can share your deliverance with them. And maybe, just maybe, they'll make the choice you made one day. Wouldn't that be awesome? See, this is how you use your salvation and your deliverance. By telling others. One of the ways you can use it, and we've been talking about the last few weeks, and I want to thank of you that's done this. You've, some of you people have just started sharing this on a weekly basis, and I'm telling you, it's helping. We're getting a whole lot more response. Our numbers are up, and the Word of God's going out. One thing you can do with this message is you can hit like and share. Somebody might listen to it, get saved. That, that credit's not mine, it's yours, because you're the one that shared it with them. I'm not preaching my word, I'm preaching the gospel. Amen? If you're here today and you say, you know what? I'm saved and I know I've been delivered, but I really hadn't thought that much about it because I'm busy with life, I'm busy with marriage, I'm busy with kids, I'm busy with all this other stuff. And, and trust me, I know, I got, like I say, I'm in the same boat with you. But Lord, I, I know there's more that you want me as an individual to do for your life and for your kingdom. And Lord, I see the times that we, we've come out of in this year and the times we're running right into in 2021. And Lord, I know that I need to be just doing a little more, just a little more for you, God. And Lord, I ask you to help me today. You're asking for help, for God to use you more. Just lift your hand if that's you. God, would you help me and use me, help me to be used a little more for your glory in where I go and in what I do in here. Hallelujah. Let's just pray over that. Father, we're asking for your help, God. But Lord, we're not just going to sit back and wait. We're going to stand and we're going to be going forward. And when you open those doors and you put that, that thing on our heart, God, give us the faithfulness in our, in, our, in our walk with you to begin to press in, to maybe mention it or, again, share. And maybe if not this, share something else that encourages them or send somebody a text of, of just encouragement this week. I'm praying for you. I'm believing with you. I'm, I, I just want you to know I care for you. Lord, just give us something extra to do this week on purpose that will bless somebody else because we want to use our salvation. We don't want to just let it lay dormant. I want to use what I've been delivered from and give you glory and see someone else be delivered, God. So, Father, help me use what you've got, Lord. Don't let me be lazy. Don't let me be apathetic with your kingdom, God. Don't let me abuse it or confuse it, God. Let me be grateful and thankful and be about the Father's business. So, Lord, we just commit ourselves to you in that way. If that's you, say yes and amen. Yes and amen. Come on, give me some praise this morning. Amen.